Hiya guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. So the WM16B milling machine, um, it has arrived, um, I've got all sorts of footage and what have you. I was going to do a video, a sort of out of the box, shall we say, video, but in my particular circumstances I had to have it delivered to my workplace. I was on limited time. I did, I've got a little bit of footage of its arrival, which I was quite pleased about, um, but I actually had to split it down into sort of component parts or manageable component parts to be able to bring it home uh, in the boot of the car. In fact, my wife was uh, in in work with me at the time, we're in the, in the same area. So I, I threw two of the large components in her boot and, uh, you know, all the rest of it went in the boot of my car. So uh, I've sort of struggled a bit, uh, picked it up, you know, all the individual pieces and brought them down to my shed. And as we stand at the moment, I haven't put it together. We shall go through that. I'll show you the bits and pieces as I uh, stripped it apart, how they are. Um, but let me show you the arrival first. Hello. Hello. Yeah, is that Wilco? Yeah, I'm ready for delivery. I'll make sure I stand clear. Cheers now. Bye. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. It's just arrived uh, pretty much within a couple of square inches of where it should have been. Thanks very much. Cheers and bye. So here we are back in the workshop and let's have a look at the uh, sort of four major heavy bits as I've uh, stripped it into to make it manageable for me to carry it down to the uh, down to my workshop. It wasn't complicated to take it apart. Um, literally, I could rip it into these four component parts in, you know, literally five minutes I think it took, um, you know, a couple of minutes to take it, each individual piece off. Um, it was on the pallet, I was working on the floor, I had some cardboard, it was quite simple without causing any damage. So let's show you the parts. So a little bit of an unusual angle, um, but yeah, this is the head unit. Um, it unbolts from the column and it's this part that rotates and swivels. Um, so literally it sits on a centre spigot and there are three nuts that hold it which you loosen to rotate the head um, and then you have to tighten them back up to lock it in position. So yeah, it was literally three nuts and washers and I could pull the head unit off the face of the column. So moving on to the column itself, um, yeah, these are the three studs that the head fits on, um, you know, with the three nuts on the face, which allows the swivel of the head. Obviously, this is the moving part of the column. I did have to fiddle about a little bit to undo the, uh, the you know, the guard cover bellows and what have you for the bed and the, uh, and the mast. But yeah, four nice large Allen bolts. I think they are M12s, um, which hold the column to the main part of the bed. So moving on, you can see in the background, I've got the table here. Um, I'll go into a few small details as we go forward, but the table is there, which I removed from the bed section. And is it in view? Yes, it is. As you can see behind the table, we've got the bed section itself. Um, yeah, with obviously it's got the saddle on it. The table sits on the saddle, the column sits on the back, and the head sits on the column. As you can see, it's four of the large pieces, and they were all quite manageable for me to carry. Uh, you know, I think maybe, you know, 30 kilos is the heaviest part. I think the head was the heaviest, um, this part here. Followed by, yeah, maybe the table, maybe the column next. Um, yeah, uh, you know, they were, they were manageable. I managed to carry them from the boot of the car, probably, you know, 50 yards to the house, through the house, across the deck and down the steps into the workshop and place them on the bench. Again, as you'd expect, um, the usual Chinese toolbox. Um, I actually, it was quite useful for me actually because even though it had a few of the bits and pieces and tools to go with it, I, all my nuts and bolts and pieces, my gibs and all that, I managed to put everything in the box um, so it was all safe as I took it apart, um, you know, when I'd finished work. So yeah, the chip guard, um, another part. Uh, I mm, yeah will I be using it probably not it does fit on an interlock on the head we'll show you that a little later so just to finish off the components um, yeah the two lead screws the table lead screw and the saddle lead screw here um, with the end plates the handle still in, uh, intact I removed them and I wrapped them up well so they didn't get damaged in transit between work and home 
So I've got a great big collection of parts all over the bench. And I think it's inspect and assemble time. So I've done no cleaning up at all since I've taken it apart. Uh, you can see uh, traces of oil, yellow oil, which is weird. Um, there is a sort of travel film on it, like a waxy, varnishy film. Um, I've just had a little look with a bit of thinners and it does, it does come off quite easily. Um, so yeah, it's covered in it all over the sort of shiny bits that you see. Um, when the first impression when you look at these uh, slideways you see these scraping marks um, yeah what can I say about these scraping marks I mean it, it's a token gesture at making it look like it's all scraped a bit um, they are ground underneath the scraping marks and obviously the scrape marks will hold some oil but it's not a scraped fit it's a ground fit and it's been scraped for oil retention. I think that's it. And it's not even crosshatch scraped. It's just one direction scrape marks just to hold oil in the ways. Which is better than no scraping at all. But it is a ground fit. So don't think that it's a scraped um, fit on any of the slide ways. Again on the table ways here there's nice oil ways machined in. Even though the edges are quite sharp. Um, sharp edges on oil ways. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about it. I think they should be rounded to allow the oil to flow out from the oil waste. So I'm going to give all this a clean up. Um, I haven't got the um, the gib screws. It's tapered gibs, which I do like far better than the adjusting sort of grub screws that you see on uh, a lot of sort of cheap Chinese lathes. Um, this is the, um, the rear way guard. I haven't taken it off as yet. Um, where the column fits is interesting. Can, is that come up in shot? I'm not sure if it shows, but you can see it's been it's a machined face where the column sits on these two pads. This end appears, it certainly appears that it's been uh, sort of linished maybe with a fine sander or what have you along half its length. More than likely looking at that to correct the angle of the head to make sure it's 90 degrees. I think it's been done in that manner. Um, it's been polished this side to tilt the head probably forward a little bit if the angle was slightly out on when it, on its initial build. So at least a bit of care has been taken. All right, not the best method, but a bit of care has been taken to align, you know, the uh, the bed weight to the column. So, yeah, I can't really knock it. Um, all the edges of all the ground ways are... Uh, well, these aren't too bad, actually, but these here, this one looks like it's been run down with a uh, a disc sander to take this corner off, which, and I can feel burrs as I run my hand down there. I'm going to be using an oil stone. Again, on the outer edge here, it's quite sharp. Um, same that side, same out here. This isn't too bad. I think I'm going to clean it all up. I'm going to strip it. And all these sharp edges on the outer edges, I'm going to oil stone. And I'm going to do a little bit of a dressing of these grooves um, that let the oil run out. Because as you can imagine, this is the major axis of continuous movement. The table running back and forth here. And if this surface, which is the smaller surface, the table's obviously a lot longer, uh, won't wear as quickly. But this small area here would wear very quickly if it wasn't getting properly lubricated. So I'm going to have a look at this and just slightly round all the edges of this oil way, which is supposed to transfer oil across the entire surface. Just on another note, um, lead screw, nice bronze uh, lead screw, lead nut, nice bronze lead nut. I haven't disturbed its alignment. I'm going to look at this at a later date. Um, but it is a split nut with a clamping screw, which you can access from underneath. So you can adjust out backlash as the lead nut wears. And there's a great big piece here. Look at this. There's a piece of bronze which has come away from the outer edge of this. So this is all very sharp as well. You know, if that piece of bronze got stuck in the lead screw, anyway. Again, bits of paint on the slideways. Um, only the primer. Um, it doesn't bear on this surface, the bed, so it's not a great problem, but I will be removing that. And again, there's no paint in this area. Um, m makes me wonder what their method of painting is. I don't think there's any masking goes on as such. It's just sort of coated where it needs it. 
but that's the base so quite happy so far I mean yeah there's nothing that can't be put right um, but you know things like that paint there would bug would bug me the sharp edges on the oil waves would bug me so I'm going to address those before I put my table back on before I put my gib back in for the saddle um, and I'm going to clean it all up obviously so I've probably spent a good half an hour with the oil stone rounding over all these edges uh, everywhere I've had the saddle off I've done exactly the same thing in the bed um, and I've tested the oilers in the bed and they're working um, the oil hole is here and here for the uh, table so it'll be a good opportunity just to check that the oilers are working. So the oiler is here. So I just put my little oil gun there. Yeah, as you, I don't know whether you spotted it, but can't quite get me. There you go. As you can see, that one's working. So I'm happy with that. I'm just checking that these things are not blocked up. Yep, and that's working as well, and it's also coming out in the lower slide and the same here. Yep. So at least I know going forward, I got the confidence to know that the oilers are working nicely, which is always a good point. So taper gibs on this machine, um, adjusters front and back. I haven't touched the one at the back. I'm going to adjust this gib in just sort of loosely to start with and then we'll we'll have a shake and a rattle and get it to somewhere where it slides smoothly and what have you um yeah so a bit of oil in the way and obviously some oil on the gib and we'll just slide that in i have oiled the other way as well um, just make sure and throw the gib on the floor oh dear me right I think we need to clean the gib again I've got a piece of rag at hand here I'm also using uh, my good old favorite let me get back out of shot my good old favorite the paper towel my hands are quite clean doing this so I'm being very clean with everything I'm doing here. Um, I mean, these are the, the faces of the gib. You don't need to do the back brace really, but I am. Um, so I'll just push the table that way. Just slide the gib in by hand. And of course, the gib adjusting screw. Um, I've just previously given this a, a clean. I'll just get it started by hand. And of course the screw pushes the taper further in, which tightens or loosens. Nowhere near yet, let me just grab a screwdriver. And I blocked my drawer up with the screwdrivers in, not to worry, I'm sure I can find one. In fact, the little toolbox that came with the mill has got a little screwdriver in it, so... <laughs> I think that's probably going to be too tight. I can feel nothing appreciable there. Um, I haven't adjusted the rear screw, so there's a good chance that... That's about it. That's still sliding nicely. And at this stage, I think I'm going to leave it there. I can feel nothing. I can feel no movement um, or no appreciable movement. But obviously, when I've got the table on it, I'll be, you know, if there's any slop or slack in it, I'll be able to feel it a lot better. So let me just uh, spread my oil about a bit more. I did test the oilers and then I went and cleaned it all up again. So I'm uh, just making sure that everything's well lubricated as I put it together. Hence why my little cover here is covered in uh, oil. In fact, a little bit of that travel grease there I haven't removed. So I think I'll go back and round and uh, just check those. But yeah, that's pretty much 
of that. Um, yeah, I'm using lots and lots of oil as I'm putting it back together. Just because, well, you can never have too much oil on it, I suppose. <laughs> so I'm about to put the uh, saddle lead screw back in. I've just had a quick look at it. It's an Acme thread. It says 3mm pitch. Um, so every turn, 3 millimeters. So I'm just going to give it some more oil again. Oh, squirt it all over the floor more than on the lead screw. <laughs> That's good. One of the little dowels has just dropped out. So I feed it through the hole. Just have a, a feel about, because it's going to be there somewhere. Here's the little nut. There. I can't find the hole. Ah. I was going the wrong direction, that's why. Okay, so I'll wind this all the way back in. I have a scrounge about on the floor, actually didn't get as far as the floor. Nearly there. Just trying to hold it as central as I can while I'm feeding it in. I don't want to do any damage. Right, there's the little dowel. Okay. What I'm going to do is put this part the right way up. I'm already cleaned in there on the, between the two faces, so I'm just going to line the dowel hole up. There she blows. So that's that dowel in place. I'm just going to not going to put it all the way. I'll leave that a little loose. Again, a little bit of oil. Pop that dowel back in its hole. Oh, well, that was. Um, I think the fit is called, uh, what does John Mills call it? A piss wobbly fit. <laughs> and that's the two dowels back in. And I've got the two screws. Again, I've checked the threads on these, made sure they're clean. And I'll get my Allen keys and I'll screw these back into place. I've just wound the table fully this way towards myself. Um, obviously you wouldn't want to do a lot of milling out here, it's got a, a big overhang, but there are times when maybe you might want to do this, but yeah, what I'm going to do is make sure when I order my DRO that I've got uh, a DRO long enough, or a scale long enough, to do the entire motion of the bed, um, you know, maybe plus a bit, so I'm just going to measure, I'm going to make a few notes as I go along, I mean the stick out there, is well it's just over 60 mil we're going to call it 60 mil so i'll wind it all back the other way basically until i get to the end of my travel i think if you took this uh the little marker off there the little one that uh registers on the rule you'd probably get even further back right that's it we've come to the end so 60 plus 120 and that's 120 on the nose uh, from there to there so 120 plus the 60 so it's 180 millimeters so I must make a note of that well in fact I've said it on the video so I know if I were to get say a 200 millimeter scale um, I'd be you know happy both ways so 200 millimeters this way is the scale I would need Moving on, let's have a look at the underside of the table. Um, yeah, this yellow travel film anti-rust corrosion protector is everywhere. Um, let me just show you the top face. Yeah, as you can see, that yellow is this uh, rust inhibitor stuff. Um, it seems to have done the trick. It's not rusted, so brilliant. Um, the central portion here where it was on the saddle, the table was sort of central about. There's nothing on it, but obviously it's all run down on the underside, so... It all's going to need a good clean. Again, this surface here doesn't act on the saddle, um, but you know the paint spillage and what have you, the overspray here, it just uh, I don't like it. Um, I'm going to give it all a good clean down, remove all this sort of overspray and what have you, and then 
probably going to again sharp edges not too bad on the table actually uh, but here on this dovetail is a sharp edge same on the other side same on this inner edge um, outer edges yeah they're going to need just a, a light stoning over just just breaking the edges with a stone so big clean up stone over and then we're ready to put the table back onto the carriage so i've just put the column back on i've done exactly the same with the column removed sharp edges burrs giving it a stone over all the sharp edges the same on the base and cleaned it all up basically bolted it back on i got the 10 mil allen key here and i've just well basically a two-fingered nip you see i can get a little bit more on there right okay so that is in position now i've cleaned up a spot on the table and put a dti clamped on the table with one of my new clamps i will bring you in on a shot of that and i was thinking about the head is not doubled to the base um it could be off rotationally out of square to the edge of the table so the way i'm going to check for that is to clock the front face of the column and i just bumped my clock <laughs> bear with me just set my clock back up perhaps put it around here let's get it nice and square straight there we are we'll be able to see that better yeah that's not bad at all okay i'll bring you around and show you where i am just putting it on and just nipping the four bolts up i haven't made any effort to square it up or anything like that i'll just bring the clock across to touch the head i'm roughly in the center now let's uh go for a zero on the clock perhaps let me just get in the way there there's a zero okay so i'll just come back this way perhaps i should clock it from one end to the other i can already see it's out let me just set a zero this end okay and i'll scroll across to the other end well it's rising so the far side is higher than this so the end where i started needs to come closer to me okay um yeah it's about 0 0.19 0 0.2 millimeters um let's say it is eight thou out across that face if i just re-zero that at the back edge okay i'm gonna wind back to this front edge i think what i'm gonna do is nip the back corner bolt here at the front and tap the column on this side of the column at the back just tap it in to rotate it back into square so yeah i'll just put a little bit more on this back front corner bolt okay actually change things slightly and I'll just give this corner a tap. Back to a zero. And I'll just nip this one a bit more. Okay, maybe tap a little tiny bit more. Okay, so we're going to test it again. So let me bring you back to the clock. So yeah, I just tap that corner until I got another zero reading. So where are we? I needed to go a bit more, clock still rising. Yeah, about 0 0.07, yeah, 3,000, something like that. Okay, I'll just re-zero that. And repeat the process. So you can see the clock's still falling. Yeah, we're about... 0 0.07 on the clock so I'll just tap the back corner again using a nylon faced soft mallet as you can see um, from experience of the last time I'm going to go a little bit past the zero for luck <laughs> just re-zero that and back the other way again Yeah, I think we're halving the error every time. Um, 0 0.04 millimetres. So, yeah, you're talking less than 2,000 now. So I'll continue with this procedure until I get it, well, I suppose until I get it, in the ideal world, until I can get it spot on.
I got sort of within a hundredth on the clock and I dogged the bolts down, it jumped around a bit, I gave it a little bit more tap. The bolts are now 90% tight, a little bit more to go. I'll just show you where I am, there's the zero on the one end. And you've got a little bit of wavering as I'm winding the handle. I think the gib on the table could be a little tighter but I don't think that's a huge problem. Yeah, and I'm within a hundredth, so I think um, I'm going to call that the starting point for now. A hundredth of a millimetre over the, I don't know how far it is across there, must be um, 120 millimetres. So a, a hundredth of a millimetre over 120 millimetres, I'm not too worried. Um, why I'm making a fuss with this to get it square to the tra table travel, normally it wouldn't be a problem with the head in the vertical position and all trammed in. But if you rotate the head from anywhere from you know if you're more uh, uh, anywhere different to pointing vertically up and down, as you rotate it, if this face weren't square to the table travel, you'd actually be moving the center point of the of the quill, um, you know, in relation to uh, this direction of the table. So that's why I'm spending a little bit of time just getting this head set up nice and square. I will. Um, get some sort of master square block set up here and just uh, check alignment vertically this way um, just to make sure that I've got 90 degrees between table and that face that's that's what I'm saying um, the only way that can be adjusted is shimming under the base whereas um, tramming uh, in this direction obviously can be done by rotation of the head